A campaign blackout is now in force in Solomon Islands ahead of tomorrow's general election. It's the first election since the departure of the regional assistance mission known as Ramsey, following instability in the early 2000s. Transparency Solomon Islands says since 2010... MPs have received hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars for development projects in their constituencies, but most of the funds have not been accounted for. Our reporter, Karoi Hawkins, is in Honiara, and I asked him about the mood in the capital. Here in the capital, it's, it's really quiet after yesterday's campaign floats with lots of festivities and people cheering and shouting up the road. Um, the media blackout came into effect at midnight as did the alcohol ban, and so it's dead quiet in the capital. But it's also quite empty because people have been boarding ships all week, fully loaded, even overloaded some of them, and heading out to the provinces to vote. Yeah, tell us a little bit about about that, because it's a bit of a challenge, isn't it, for some people to actually even get to the ballot box? It is. It is nuts. Um, Actually, the hospital have gone into emergency mode. So no referrals, no elective surgery, because all of the nurses and and various essential staff have hopped on these boats and gone to the provinces to vote. So basically, um, uh, people come from, uh, traditionally come from societies in the provinces, and everything is centralized in the capital, Honiara, in terms of development, money, education. So people come to town to work. So when it comes to election time, they feel uh, some of them are more strongly connected to their their rural communities, so they all try and go back and vote at home. But there's no provision for out-of-constituency voting in Solomon Islands, so they have to physically be present in their provinces. So there's this about a two-week period where everyone just disappears um, and goes off to vote and, and comes back after the election. Yeah, so what have police been saying about security there and how much security is around? They've got a lot of high-visibility policing that they're doing. They've been patrolling streets. They've been going out and doing community awareness. And they're telling everybody, look, we're here. We're going to keep everybody safe. Everybody behave and make sure it's a free and fair election. Um, And they're saying they they don't have any intel of any major disturbances that that they're expecting during the election. But the the sense that you're getting from a, a lot of the different parts of the country coming over the national radio is is that um, it is quite tense because th- this whole election revolves around something called the Consti- Constituency Development Funds. There's this massive uh, millions of dollars of funds that MPs get to develop their constituencies. They're basically slush funds. They have full discretion over them. So people are trying to leverage su- uh, support around the, the winning candidate so that for the next four years they'll get um, all of this money coming into the communities and the losers don't get nothing. So it's quite, it's quite polarised. It's not, it's not uh, intellectual or about laws. It's all about these funds. So this, it's fair to say then that this election is being seen as a chance to root out corruption by some people. I mean, what, what are voters telling you about the kind of leaders that they want? Most people I've talked to want change. So they're, they're saying they want better leaders, they want change. But again, when I ask them, what do they mean by better leaders? What do they mean by good leaders? They're repeating the same thing. Someone that can help us with school fees, someone that can build up our our clinic, someone that can... So these are very, very money-oriented things. They're not, they're not talking long-term about the future or stuff like that. There are some, there are some who are talking about a visionary leader, and, and all of that. But uh, in the end, when it comes down to it, because of the, the state of the economy here, high unemployment, high youth population, um, everything centralised in, in one place, which is the capital where I am, there's a lot of desperation economically. And um, so, so people, are, when they say they want a good leader, they're, they're really saying that they want someone who can help them out. So, given that all of these people are leaving Honiara, making this pilgrimage home to vote, uh, is it the expectation that there is going to be a high turnout of voters? Um, usually, traditionally, there always has been in the Solomon Islands, so, so I guess they're expecting that, but it dep- depends on the weather. It's been sunny all week so far, but if it starts pouring rain, then they'll affect things, obviously. But um, uh, usually, traditionally, it's always been a, a high voter turnout. So I think I think that that won't change this election in terms of how much people have gone through. You know, they're hopping on these crowded boats, women and children sleeping on the decks, and and just going for some of these boats are going for days 
to get to their location. So they're not going to turn up, do all, go through all that and not cast the ballot. Karoi Hawkins uh, reporting from the Solomon Islands and he says tomorrow's election results probably won't be confirmed until Monday.